things. We had identifiable generals. We had all that happening. So the same angel that appeared in chapter 8 appears in chapter 9. And Daniel is now told to understand the prophecy. The only vision to be understood was the vision of the 2300 days. So therefore, Daniel 9.24 and onward would be the logical place to find the interpretation of the 2300 days. All minds clear? We believe that, don't we? So, 70 weeks. Now we could, we, I don't think I have time to go off on this very much because this is like mathematics. And uh, it's, we're going to, you guys keep your eyes on the screen. It's going to move fast. Here we go. The 70 weeks. How much of the time of the 2300 days was determined or cut off for the Jewish people? Janet chapter 9 verse 24 says 70 weeks. So here we have a little chart which you might be able to see. It's kind of hard. We might want to pull off the, pull off the lights for this one because uh, these pictures are pretty light. Um, we have, we have uh, 2300 days and it says that, it says, uh, I'm sorry, that 70 weeks are cut off of the 2300 days. So, we have the decree to restore Jerusalem in 457 BC. Why was I so excited about this timeline? Because this decree to restore Jerusalem is in 457 BC. Now we're going to count up the, the, from 457 BC, we're going to go seven weeks out, and that is 49 years, a day for a year. And how many days in a week? There's seven. And so seven times 70 week, seven weeks is 49 years. So now we're moving along to 408 BC. And guess what? That's the restoration of Jerusalem. 408 BC is when um, we know that they went back. People that were on their time out, their time out was up. They got to go back to Jerusalem. And they started to rebuild the wall, they started to rebuild the temple, and the restoration of Jerusalem begins. Now we're moving along, 62 weeks, if you go into 62 weeks, guess what? It's 27 AD. Jesus wasn't born in 0 AD, there is no 0 AD, just by the way. By the way. Most likely it was uh, 4, 4 BC, the year that Christ was born. So in 27 AD, when he began to be about 30 years old, he began his ministry. And that was at his baptism that he began his ministry. So now, in the, um, in the midst of the week, it says he was cut off. And not for himself, but he was cut off. So you have the crucifixion of Jesus appearing in the middle of the week in 31 AD. And then you have the stoning of Stephen, the gospel going to the Gentiles, and you have one week, seven years, plus the 69 weeks, and there's your 70 weeks. But notice that they are cut off from the 2300 days. Why do I care about the 2300 days? Because this prophecy of Jesus coming in 27 AD, and then being crucified in the middle of the week, and then the, uh, the gospel going to the uh, Gentiles in 34 AD came to pass exactly as God promised it would. So the starting date is so important because the starting date is the date. Amen. The starting date is the date. If you know that there are other Christians who believe this, they believe the same prophecy, but they just skip their date way, way ahead. They have something called a gap that we're not going to get into. But if I start with that date, and I go up the rest of the 2300 days, I get to 1844 AD. Now if I want to throw away 1840 AD, 1844 AD, I've got to throw away the other stuff too. And I'm not ready to do that. Because Jesus' birth, death, cutting off in the middle of the week was all prophesied. It came to pass just like God said it would. That's important to me. That's important to me if you're Jewish and you read this Old Testament and God was bringing his people there. So it's clear that the 70 weeks are part of the 2300 days, and it's seen, And if it's seen that it's part of the 2300 days and not a separate prophecy, then it's impossible to assert a gap in it. Because that's what the, uh, the evangelicals want to do. They want to put this thing way to the end. Rivera, the Jewish, uh, the Jesuit priest, uh, he tried it to throw it in the future, Al-Khazar, Al he put it in the past. And then some lady had a vision that promoted this theory. They stuck it in the um, Schofield Bible. It was picked up by Hal Lindsey. 
and it was promoted. By the way, none of those things came to pass. So the gap theory is not biblical. They need it because they want to have a seven-year tribulation. They don't know who Israel is. We are Israel, folks. Amen. We have been born again. We are part of God's conquering team. And the uh, Christians hope they don't have to go through the tribulation, so they want to have a rapture. And yet the Bible says after the tribulation of those days, that's when we're going to see Jesus. So the devil is promoting it because it gives them a second chance, but the gap theory is not biblical. So when are the seven week and 2300 day prophecies to begin? And this was in Daniel chapter, um, it was right there, Daniel chapter 9 verse 25. From the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem. And what would happen at the end of the first 69 weeks? Messiah the Prince shall come. And what's the first message that Jesus announced after his baptism? He announced the time is fulfilled. And what is ultimately to happen to the Messiah? Messiah shall be cut off. And how long does the Messiah confirm his covenant with the Jews? For one week. And what does he do in the middle of the week? He shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And when does the 2300 day prophecy end? 1844. October 22. They were told me what was to happen in 1844 at the end of the 2300 days. The sanctuary shall be cleansed. And guess what? That's a message for another day. Are you thankful that the Bible predicted so clearly the baptism and the crucifixion of Jesus? Are you yes. thankful? Say amen. 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 I'm thankful because my faith is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Hallelujah. And this word is not only true, it's provable, it's able to be... Uh, shown that God knew what was going to happen before it happened. And He told us. He told them. He told us. So if you all stand, let's stand and sing uh, our closing song. And our closing song is number 189. All that thrills my soul is Jesus. Yeah. And that's what you call speed teaching.